Hello everyone. My name is Shweta Rani and the topic of my presentation is effect of full Frankel emission on electroluminescence in quantum dot light emitting devices using nickel oxide. The outline of the presentation is as follows. First, we will go through the introduction, then device structure, theoretical modeling, results and discussion, and finally conclusion. Quantum dots are competitive candidates for lighting and display applications due to their excellent optical properties, tunable band gaps, narrow emission bandwidth, and high efficiency. Quantum dot light emitting devices face issues with their stability and must be overcome to achieve next level of development. QLEDs can be classified as organic LEDs where both the electron and hole transport layer is organic in nature. Inorganic LEDs where both of the transport layer is inorganic in nature or hybrid QLED where either of the charge transport layer is organic in nature. One such hybrid QLED under study is nickel oxide based QLED where NiO is used as a P-type material along with poly-TPD forming a dual HTL and ALQ3 as ETL and CDS is ZNS four shell quantum dots as emissive layer. The NiO, and the NiO layer is easy to form and have good physical structure and thus is generally preferred. The presence of NiO in whole transport layer leads to balance within the device and thus improves the efficiency of the device. Now coming to the structure of the device under study, figure one shows the NiO based QLED where NiO and poly TPD form dual HTL, each of 20 nanometer, 20 nanometer of CDS is an SQD layer and 40 nanometer of ALQ3 ETL sandwiched between ITO anode and AL cathode. This structure is preferred as NIO based device suppresses excessive hole current, which was the case when P dot PSS and poly TPD were used as double HTL. The, the polyfrenkel emission arises due to electric field enhanced thermal emission, and this phenomenon might be responsible for the behavior of hole current in the device. According to PF emission mechanism, the current density can be given with this equation, where C is a constant, E is the electric field in the NIO layer or P dot PSS layer, whichever is used, Q is the electron charge, pi t is the barrier height for charge carrier emission from the trap, trap states, Epsilon is the relative dielectric permittivity of HDL layer. Epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space. T is absolute temperature and K is Boltzmann constant. The electric field inside the NIO layer can be given as this equation, where VBI is the built-in potential, which can be given as the difference between per function of ITO anode and AL cathode. The effective dielectric permittivity can be found with this equation, where DI to D total is the inter distance. The effect of PF emission can be given with a linear equation of current density divided by corrected bias, as shown in this equation. The terms M and B are slope and intercept respectively, which can be given with this equ these equations, and these are temperature dependent variables. The values of the parameters used in this work is given in the table one. Relative dielectric permittivity of NIO and P.PSS is given as 3 and 2.27 respectively. Effective dielectric permittivity for NIO and P.PSS is calculated as 2.3 and 4.1558 respectively. Barrier height for NIO and P.PSS can be given as 0 0.27 and 0 0.25 electron volt respectively. Built-in potential is given as 0 0.5 volt, interlake load distance as 100 nanometer, and temperature taken into consideration is 150 Kelvin, 200 Kelvin, and 230 Kelvin. Coming to the results and discussion, figure two shows variations of current with respect to bias for NIO and P.PSS devices. The comparison shows that P.PSS devices has higher current density than NIO devices, and thus the whole current needs to be controlled to bring charge balance within the device. Figure 3 shows PF emission plots in terms of corrected bias. The inset shows temperature dependent slopes that is M and B which are inversely proportional to the temperature. The linear results show that PF emission might be responsible for whole current in NIO devices. Now coming to the conclusion, the NIO based QLED devices are affected by full Frankel emission as can be shown with the linear uh, relation. 
as the higher hole current led to imbalance in the device the suppression of hole current by using nio as hdl led to increased efficiency this suppression in excessive hole current led to substantial increase in luminous efficiency with high color purity nio films are very easy to fabricate and thus are generally preferred in modern day leds be it hybrid qleds or in or organic qleds so these are the references that were used in this work with this i would like to conclude my presentation thank you for your kind attention